Thank you so much, Christine, for this be. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, yay. All right, welcome everyone <laughs> to the 11th annual Magdalene Moonrise Service. Oh my God, here we are in this blessed space of love, joined by a heartfelt community of friends, our deep friendship that we have been doing this ritual for over 11 years together in our hearts. And we are welcome you so much and we are so grateful and so happy to have you with us as we begin to open into a magnificent journey into the sacred space of love. I'm going to ask my dear friend, Connie, mm. to take us on a little journey mm. to activate what she is one with in her life, the heart of the mother. Oh, indeed. Thank you, Connie. Welcome, everybody. Thank you, Christy. Thank you for joining us in this most sacred way on this most holy day. And I'm just going to take us on a, a brief interlude with the divinity of this day. I invite you to close your eyes. Let us begin by taking a deep inhale. Imagine yourself breathing in source and exhaling as we call forth Divine Mother and all the lady masters of the planetary and cosmic hierarchy. Let us call to the divine mother, the lady masters to supply us tonight with a group Merkaba in the shape of a gigantic lotus, lotus blossom, which will carry us into the cosmos, through the heavens, through the many hundreds of levels of multi-dimension to the throne of our Divine Mother. In this moment, I invite you to breathe in and feel yourself being lifted up by Divine Mother's embrace, carried upward through all dimensions of reality to the very throne of creation itself. Let your hearts beat wildly and deeply as our Lotus Blossom Merkaba ascends to the level of divinity at the heart of creation. This is where we experienced absolute stillness and all pervading love. We are enveloped in a translucent platinum pink light that is now absorbing and surrounding every cell, molecule, atom and electron of our being into the soul and our essence. Feel yourself in this moment being immersed in the most sublime fragrance, the sweetest smelling roses that you can imagine. Perhaps as your hearing becomes acute, you can hear the music in the form of radiant choir of angels singing ineffable, magnificent melodies to your heart in this moment. The light emanating from the throne of Divine Mother is so bright. Just feel it absorbing and running right through you. As you focus upon her translucent light, you see her arms as they gather each and every one of us into the center of her heart as if our group has entered and becoming one with the living pulsating heart of our Divine Mother. And just remain here for a few moments, knowing that Divine Mother and Divine Father are but two halves of the same whole. And together they comprise that which we call God, Source, Love, Universe. So allow yourself in this moment at this time at this special sacred offering to feel into the love, the exquisite joy, warmth, tenderness, and the nurturing of our divine mother. 
as you feel yourself transforming into both an anchor of this love and a transmitter. Knowing that the safety and the nurturing that exists within this very sacred gift that Divine Mother continues to infuse within each and every one of us here is the reawakening of this part of yourself. It's the core of the goddess within both female and male alike. And as you breathe in this light emanation, this translucence, this essence, see Mary Magdalene as she emerges from the light, feel her gaze penetrating you at every level of your being, flooding you with the essence of her divine mercy and her divine compassion. Let the purest qualities and the mercy just wash away any judgments or negativity that you have toward yourself. Let it spread outwards to others in your personal life who are suffering. Let the same quality of love, luminosity, and compassion flow outward into the entire world, the entire planet, as you join with our beloved Magdalene in her holy service, spreading her divine compassion, mercy, and forgiveness. And breathe deeply your own essence as we feel the emergence of the feminine Elohim, the Amazonia, the Luminia, the Amora, the Estrella, the Virginia, the Aloha. Feel the enormity of the divine grace and blessing of the feminine strength and will for each of us to create. Feel the goddesses of love, liberty, Lady Nada, Mary Magdalene, Portia, Mother Teresa. All of the lady masters who have ever graced or touched our planet be with us now. And finally, let us give thanks to the divine feminine spark within each of us, yourselves. Whether you are man or woman, all the ladies, all the lady masters, of the planetary and cosmic hierarchy, step forward now and bring forth a love so deep and a shower of light so luminescent that all who reside here within our sacred heart know this love as our own. And now, beloveds, let us just join our energies of this love and light and let us be the collective rain shower of love and light and forgiveness and grace upon our planet Earth. Thank you, Divine Feminine Spirit. Thank you all for being here. Blessed be Aho Hashem. Blessed be Connie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my dear one. Thank you all for being dear ones. For it is said, it is supposed to be heaven on earth, not heavens in the heaven. But in order to become heaven on earth, we need the sacred holy women and men who know how to claim who they are, that I am the divine self within me, I carry that ancient spark of love that was put in from the beginning of time. No wind can blow it out. No fire can burn it away. Nothing can harm it, for it is what is real. And we know it to be true for you as for all of us. So let the celebration begin. May we walk forth in this great joy the love of the Magdalene, the Divine Feminine, the Divine Mother, the Cosmic Mother. Blessed be. You know, one of my signature, you might say, mission statements was that I opened the, the Course in Miracles randomly one day when I was getting the day of my ordination. And I saw these words that caught my eye. It says, all separation vanishes 
as holiness is shared. For holiness is power. And by sharing it, it gains in strength. And I had never felt the power that comes from holiness. And I never realized that if I shared that holiness with others, it would strengthen me and expand my sense of who I am and put me into ecstatic bliss and joy. <laughs> I'm very grateful. So that's why I asked my dearly beloved Connie Viveros to open the sacred space for us where she holds the rose of the Divine Mother in her heart. And what we are doing today on this auspicious day of, of Easter is we're going to celebrate equality is love. And it just so happens that tonight, the moon is split 50-50, half light, half dark. So because of that, that is really an auspicious metaphor, right? That equality is love. But why? Why do we even need to think about equality? We should know, right? We're all equal. We're all part of the one life, the one spirit, the one love. But ah, we still don't have equal rights for women. At the beginning of this year, we thought the 28th Amendment was going to be ratified. But somehow, the door closed. The time had lapsed, supposedly, the patriarchy said. So we couldn't ratify all the states that needed to be ratified. So we still don't have equal rights for women, but we claim our equality. We claim that our beloved Yeshua sees and knows us as equal. And we have made progress for the Pope in 2016, raised Mary Magdalene up to full status as the apostle to the apostle. This beautiful painting of the Magdalene by Janet and my favorite artist. She is the apostle to the apostle, Mary Magdalene, who was the, one of the holy women that we are so devoid of in our culture and our society, but we are stepping into it, we are claiming it, we are growing into it. There are many Magdalene's on the planet and you will see many of them tonight, today, as they come forth. And there is actually a prophecy in both Matthew and Mark that says that I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deeds will be remembered and discussed. And you know, it began for me as my work as a priestess who devoted to the Magdalene. When Bill Englehart, who's the senior minister at Unity Marin had a dream that the Black Madonna came to him. And while the Black Madonna came to him, she said, Bill, I want the rudder. And he's like, what do you mean you want the rudder? Now, Bill is the senior minister of the church of unity, which is a large church, but he's also the president of the board of worldwide unity at the time. So he was overseeing the worldwide ministry of unity. And so the Black Madonna came to him and she said, Bill, you need to give me the rudder. And he's like, no, you can't have the rudder. The rudder's mine. I don't want to give you the rudder. And he's like, Bill, you need to give me the rudder. And she didn't argue with it. She held out her hands and she looked him in the eye and she said, the rudder, Bill. And he released the rudder into her hands and he woke up and he went, oh my God, what was that? He was like in shock. And so he said, I, I, I think Christy knows about the Black Madonna. When I see her, I'm going to ask her about it. So I saw him a couple of days later, and he told me about the dream. And he says, what do you think it meant? And I said, Bill, she wants in. You know, we have been missing the stories, which we're now discovering through the beautiful storytellings of, of the Magdalene scholars that are coming forward, telling us the story about Mary Magdalene and her Egyptian slave child named Sarah and that they came by rudderless boat to the south of France. And I saw this stunning painting of the Black Madonna and I was really taken by it. And the woman in the middle of these two women, my, I'm on the left and, 
and Michelle Newman is on the far right, is uh, Elizabeth Gibbons. And she painted this painting. And so suddenly after Bill's dream, the doors flew open and I was able to start doing ceremony at Unity and Marin. And what should happen is Elizabeth had this painting and I saw that she had brought one of her paintings to Grace Cathedral. So I said to her, Elizabeth, can, I, can you bring your Black Madonna painting to Unity and Marin and help us? We want to do this incredible ceremony. And she was like, well, where's Unity? It's in Nevada. Oh my God. You know what? Come, going out of San, it's on a Friday night you're doing this? Coming out of San Francisco? Oh my goodness. That's like a lot of traffic. It, the painting is really super heavy. Takes two people to carry it. And I was like, oh my God. I so didn't want to impose on her. She said, let me think about it and I'll get back to you. Well, the next day she goes to the San Francisco Crystal Fair and to pick up her art supplies. And Michelle Newman just happens to be having a table and is doing readings. And as Elizabeth walks by, she feels a really strong pull like she needs to have a reading, but she doesn't do readings. So she was really curious about this. Like, how could this be, right? That she would have this reading. So um, she decided to honor it. She sat down with Michelle, who was really trying to close up and get out of there. Uh, it was the end of the day. And um, she said, well, what do you want a reading about? She says, well, I don't know. Uh, how do I get my artwork out in the world? So Michelle closes her eyes and she says, hmm, I'm getting a very clear, strong message. You're supposed to take your Black Madonna painting to Unity and Marin on Friday night and help this woman named Christy Michael. And so when she called me the next day, she, I was so expecting her to say, no, 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 I can't do it. And, and she's, no, she says, I can. And let me tell you why. And then she told me what had happened. Now, these two did not know each other before. And here we are at the San Francisco Opera where the Gospel of Mary Magdalene was. That is such a powerful story. And I know it's almost becoming a ritual that I tell it every Easter, but you know, many people are new on this call, and on this Zoom thing, so I thought I'd share it again because, and Michelle is with us today. Um, Elizabeth actually lives in Hawaii now. <laughs> anyway, I, I, um, I just want you to know there's something real that's happening, that she's bringing all of us together. The divine feminine is rising and she is awakening us in our hearts. So every ceremony I do, I start with honoring the Black Madonna. So for today, this time, I have, I have um, asked my dear friend, Oshala D, who is joined with Sharika Gregory and her son to do a, a ritual and an honoring to the Black Madonna. Oh, ancestors. O oh, ancestors, blacker than a thousand midnights, luminosity of a trillion stars. The dark and the light is who we are. The black void from which we sprang is where we return when no remains. From the source, from this source, is where the Black Madonna was born, both in flesh and in consciousness, oh yes, she <laughs> was adorned. From her womb sprang the sun, child of creativity, father of the one. North, south, east, west, the birth of regeneration until there is rest. Oh, Black Madonna, daughter of a thousand midnights and a trillion stars, divine sister, auntie, mother of all, hold us in your mercy as we prepare for our call.
Amen. Asheo Ho Tep. Amen Ra Asheo Ho Tep. Amen Ra Asheo Ho Tep. nurturing fruit, <laughs> the divine mother. Blessed be. Blessed be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Blessed be. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> that is fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> Father Thank you. Falls, but, but before the father becomes a man, he has to start off as a child, right? Fantastic. <laughs> the joy that <laughs> comes. One. The okay. beautiful. This is our divine son, Osive. <laughs> All right. Thank Ashe. you so much, my dear Ashe. So we're now going to introduce Nina Gray. So Karen, if you could have Nina join me as Nina Gray has put together a beautiful tribute. Unbelievable. Nina, do you want to say something? I mean, Nina Gray is, is a professional artist and musician and has been performing on the Saturday Night Alive show. And I have just been so struck by your sacred love that comes through your words of your songs. It is so touching. And I love that you're also a social justice advocate because that is near and dear to my heart as well. That we not only need to raise the divine feminine, but we need to bring the equity, the equal healing among all people everywhere. Mm. So Nino, would you like to say something about your mother, Mary? Mm. Film that we're gonna, you're gonna share with us. You know, may you enjoy it, may you receive it, may it enter your heart in a good way and may it strengthen the intention of this gathering tonight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, blessed be. Mm -hmm. Nina will be back with this a little later to sing one of her songs live. Mother Mary, do you care if we have a moment of your time See we built this new world We forged this new way But it seems we forgot about the light We put profits over being good hearted people Praising dollar signs and pipelines Without water how will we grow Forgot that without love life's a cold existence but now we're waking up in the face of this resistance So if you could spare some of your peace to our minds We will receive it Oh, we will receive it Mother Mary, are you sure you don't care if we Have one more minute of your time we don't mean to be a bother We're just all looking around at each other As we try to walk these very thin lines Cause when we came, all we wanted was our freedom Work hard towards something we believe in And end our days giving praise to the sun And even though we got a little off track Yeah, I got faith, we can find our way back You know we're ready for 
a new day and a new dawn So if you could spare some of your peace to our minds We will receive it Oh, you know we will receive it And na 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 Oh, Mother Mary You know we can use your peace Oh, Mother Mary Finally ready to receive Thank you so much, Nina. <laughs> it was quite beautiful and magnificent. You, the words, people will need to listen to it. It's up on YouTube so people can go and watch it again. It's amazing. I'll leave the YouTube link in the chat right now so you can see oh, it. Perfect. perfect. I think it's worth repeating to see it again and again. So thank you. What I usually always do on the moonrise service for Easter is I take a look at the astrology and it's always been amazing what is astrologically happening. And I was looking at the astrology for starting at seven o'clock when we began this service through this evening, what is the astrology telling us and how is it informing us about the work that we're about to do, this journey that we're taking in this beautiful celebration of the Magdalene moonrise service. So, I asked my dear friend, Karen LaFuma, who's an astrologer, if she would come on and join me with another dear friend, Luminessa Injara, who is our priestess of the flame, to tell us the story about today and this time astrologically, just what, what is this all about? Well, it's an amazing, amazing symbol of this moment it's like as above so below so this particular time is calling women to reinvent yourself and we have a massive conjunction in Aries in the seventh house and seventh house is you know the partnerships and Aries is the individual and so this is a time to call on what goddess do you want to reinvent yourself with? Because the sun, which is the consciousness, is right there on the descendant. And it, it's actually forming a T-square in the heavens. And, and this T-square is saying, um, it's, it's a kind of a dynamic energy of, of driving, uh, with it's like a three-legged uh, table it's like movement you have to keep moving and there's a tension and creativity here so the goddesses that are being activated right now is first of all Ceres. Ceres was recently uh, promoted to a dwarf planet and um Ceres represents nourishment and she's the mother, the goddess of agriculture. She represents our food and our way we nurture it. So this to me is telling us that we need to do self-care, that it is not a, a luxury. It's a, it's a natural thing, a prerequisite for being a dynamic woman. And when I look at these goddesses, the first thing I want to ask you is, do you believe that the divine light shines within? If you do, then you're a goddess or God, God goddess. So Ceres is the first one exactly conjunct the sun. And then we have Venus. Venus is the love goddess. She's creativity. She represents uh, the womanly wonders, I call her. She's, she's into her sexuality and her creativity and 
and she was born full blown and uh, as a woman and came out of, of the waters. And so she tells us to love and allow and accept what is. And you see my body's going like da relaxing. If we could just love and allow it, everything works. We're magnetic. Just, just accept what is. We can't change reality. So this is what she teaches us. And it's the first initiation on the hero's journey. So she's, she's really, really dynamic. And then next is the black moon Lilith. And I want to, I want um, Luminescence to tell you what this is because to me, she's just beginning to bloom in my life. So Luminessa, tell us about black moon Lilith in Aries con, in this massive conjunction. And what does she mean to us if we wanna choose her to identify with? I will share with all of you the lineage of Lilith. Lilith as the first woman of creation. And her story is not well known because we know often as Lilith as being the goddess who is uh, the demon goddess. She was demonized by the patriarchy from the Hebrewic traditions. And in truth, my lineage is a 6,000 year old lineage based in the stories of the temples of Anana and the story of Lilith, who happens to be um, from a lineage called the Keepers of the Flame. And I am a priestess of flame. You are restoring feminine blueprint back to its original wholeness before it was distorted. We are reclaiming every aspect of our heart, mind, soul, and body to know who we truly are and our, the importance of our role right now in the world. And so thank you so much. That's great. Thank you so much. Hey. Remember, Ceres, the nurturer, Venus, the love goddess, and creativity. Then we have... Um, uh, Black Moon Lilith, and then another another goddess that is sitting there, and this is very potent right now, is Eris, E-R-I-S, and Eris is the feminine warrior, and to me, she's the goddess warrior, and she, she is a, a dwarf planet, and she's way, way out in the Kepler belt, which means she doesn't move very, very uh, far, and all of us living basically have her in Aries. And, um, um, but she is symbolic of uh, the revealer of the truth. And she's called the goddess of chaos and discord, but she rep, it depends on your consciousness, but she absolutely represents the activist. And she speaks up and tells you and reveals what's wrong. And so this is, this is a powerful goddess and she is in a formation right now with uh, Hamaya. Hamaya is another dwarf planet which is symbolic of rebirth and she's in Libra. And so she was ability, she's an Hawaiian goddess that could give birth from all parts of her body. And she became, she was an old woman then she became a young woman. So she's symbolic of this regenerative nature. And she's right there in the first house, which is our identity. Which identity do you want? Now, the interesting thing about this moment is that moon is in Capricorn conjunct Pluto and Pluto is death, rebirth, transformation. It's a process of regeneration. And it's, it's like it's in Capricorn. We haven't reached equality yet. We have to break the old patterns. We have to do our inner work. We have to look at our conditionings and our emotional wounds and, and how our ego is fixated and to understand that process so that we can change and re re reinvent ourselves. So this, this Eris, Pluto and Himaya have been solidly going on for a year and a half, two years now. And so this, this is the, the patriarchal and the breaking free of the, re, of the speaking up, this going to the streets, transformation, saying your truth, 
being who you are and Hamaya, the rebirth. And so this has been going on for a while. So, and we also have Juno, which is what are you committed to in, in, in Sagittarius, which tells us to, to be committed to the higher truths. And then Jupiter is beautifully in Aquarius, uh, sextiling, opportunistic aspect with, with all this Aries and this Juno and, and, and trining Hamaya. So there's just tremendous energy. Which goddess do you want? The call and support each other. Support your other, your women friends. Come together and be, be, be connected to each other. Support each other. Yeah, you know, this is, this is what I really loved about what you had found in the reading was that this, this quality of support and the community coming together and gathering. And really it's the deeper question of how do we want to be as community? Do we want to be a community living in love? And if we do want to be a community living in love, then we need to dance together, sing together, and celebrate together who we are as our divine nature. So Karen, thank you so much for bringing your wisdom forward and, and sharing your reading with us. That was wonderful. Um, this, we're going to, Christine Tulis is going to help us with the call for the ancient mother that we have all these ancient goddesses that are activated and in the chart right now present to us those energies so i thought this was the perfect time for christine to to um sing this song about the ancient mother Ancient mother, we hear your call. Thank you so much. And I want to take you on a little journey about the mystical side of our wonderful Easter celebrations. For whenever you're dealing with the goddess, 
<laughs> you never know what's going to happen. I have had so many magical and mystical things. You heard one of my stories in the beginning about the dream that Bill had about the Black Madonna. And then suddenly I was able to have the Black Madonna painting at my first ceremony at Unity in Marin. I've been in deep study and immersion in the sacred all week with Kayleen Osbo, who's one of the PhD scholars of the Magdalene, did her whole dissertation doctoral on the Magdalene. And this is a picture of Chartres, Chartres Cathedral in, the, in France, just outside of Paris, that has a labyrinth in it. And she was telling us a story about the Easter dance that is danced on the morning of Easter in the, in the French cathedrals that are devoted to the divine feminine and the divine mother. And when I received the vision for this particular Easter, one of the things that came in loud and clear was you must have a dance. You've got to have a dance. <laughs> I was like, okay, how are we going to do a dance? Everything's shut down. People can't connect. How are we going to do this? And, um, but I was told, you know, we'll work it out. So we were able to have the dance. We were able to, to practice all the dancers have been practicing all month. They have been in, in the arts dancing. And when I talked to my, our choreographer, Alona Marshall, who I'm going to invite on in just a minute, about what dance should we do? She said, oh, let's do this Hebrew folk dance. Now, I love that because one of the splits that happened from the crucifixion was the Jewish community getting separated from the Christian community. And the Magdalene is all about inclusiveness. It's all about healing. It's all about bringing people together. So to have a Hebrew Hebrew folk dance. Well, Kayleen was telling this story about how the dance happened in the cathedrals on Easter morning was the people that were going down into the, the crypt where the Black Madonna was that were ready to be, be baptized and to go to the sacred well that's underneath. Most of these cathedrals are built on sacred wells. And so they would go down there and they would get baptized and they would be given a candle to illuminate their way as they came back up and then they would circle the, the labyrinth and they would dance and they would dance. So I was, I got really excited about this. So I went and I did some research on it and I found an article that was written, which I'm happy to send anyone the link to um, about what was the dance. And it turns out it's the dance of the Jewish and the Christian people. It's a Hebrew dance. And it's three steps forward, as you see in this image of Jesus resurrecting, and he's got one hand, he's, he's reaching out to Magdalene, three step forward to reach Magdalene, and then you dance one step back, which is to pull up the ancestors and to break them free from the chains that bind them of their illusions of separate self and whatnot, and bring them into the wholeness and the oneness. And you'll notice that Jesus is emerging out of what looks like the Vesica Pisces, which is very interesting because when you do, when they did the sacred geometry on the mathematical configuration from a sacred geometry point of view of the Vesica Pisces, it comes to in the in the in the Greek, it comes to the number one five three which translates into the original Greek alphabet. The original Greek, you know, they match the, the math, the form, the numbers with, they match that with the, the letters. And it, what it spells out is it spells out the Magdalene. <laughs> so this is considered to be the Vesca Pisces, the womb, the, the vulva of, of, the, of the Magdalene that he's coming through. And, and you can Google, there's so many pictures of it, but even more importantly, the, 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 the whole feeling of him coming out of this egg is, is, is indicative of the cosmic womb of the divine mother. And that's, an, that's even more important and more significant because as you well know, 
there was so much that was suppressed by um, about the divine feminine and Mary Magdalene, the patriarchy did not want people to know. They labeled her a prostitute um, and and tried to diminish her. Well, we we've seen this Michael Michelangelo's uh, La Pietra, which is such a stunning picture. And tonight we have the good fortune to have Diana Melchizedek and and her husband Michael on with us. And Diana leads people in the sacred holy womb wisdom trainings. And she was in telling me this story that what this is about and the reason why his womb, the male have womb too, right? The womb space of the masculine is laid across the womb space of the feminine. And you notice how her intent is really going down because she is literally draws out the soul through her womb, which is one with the cosmic mother. So she is able through her consciousness, and this is the woman who was able to conceive light and birth a God, right? Which you will find a lot of interesting information in Marguerite Rigoso's new book about the virgin birth phenomena. Um, but basically, Mother Mary was one of the greatest masters that ever walked the planet. And she already was one with the cosmic mother. So it was through her embodied breath that she was actually there able to assist her son in his resurrection. And a lot of this information came from the translation of the palm leaves, which, um, you know, um, the priest, high priestess Diana Melchizedek teaches in her holy womb chakra workshops and, and passes on this lineage of, of ancient wisdom about just what a master Mother Mary was. So I, I am so grateful that she is with us today. And before we go into the, to bring up Diana, so she can say hello to everybody. There she is. Wonderful. Hello. Diana. Hi. Thank you Great. guys for yes. <laughs> I, you know, I had always uh when Kayleen Osbo told me about the Easter dance, we always had an Easter dance, but I I I received that as an intuition to do the Easter dance. I didn't know there was an actual historic um reason mm -hmm. for the Easter dance. And it's because when people come out from the the crypt where the Black Madonna is, and then they come up to the labyrinth, they danced around the labyrinth. And that was the tradition to doing the dance for the joy of being the resurrected self, to be claiming their holy and high holy self. So it was just so interesting to me, the connection with that. And 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 then she went, she brought up the La Pietra image as well and started talking about that. But you put a whole nother understanding so i don't know if you want to say a couple of words about that but so you know there's there's a lot there's a lot here in the holy womb chakra teachings but mother mary was able to really become one with the mother the divine mother the cosmic mother when she was pregnant with jesus so as she did that he was receiving those abilities as well so they, they didn't necessarily at that time, were not maybe fully conscious of how this was all gonna play out, but her womb chakra, her developed cleared womb chakra, her, the power that she had in her womb chakra was able to take him, as you see him in the Pieta, to connect him back to her womb chakra as his biological mother, and then she connected her womb chakra to the cosmic mother's womb chakra. And she was able to heal him, his body enough physically and emotionally so that his spirit was, that his body was even capable of having his spirit come back for the resurrection. So really in a nutshell, the resurrection could not have happened without her empowered purified womb chakra. Yeah. And it's such a critical piece for women right now to know, because, you know, like other things with, with the patriarchal takeover, um, 
it that that piece has been kept out okay because that's where our power lies now men do have a womb chakra but women have the physical womb as well so it's like having a power object in your body okay so yeah. and and it, it's just it, there's like again there's so much here but that's just in a nutshell of how that played out during the resurrection so maybe diana you can put in the chat you know how people can get a hold of you guys or where what your website sure. something so that anyone who wants to do because really this is the work of sacred holy women and men and Michael and Diana are such an incredible example of two, two couple, a couple who really works as their divine self in total equality, you know, total respect. <laughs> Boy, I love you guys so much. It's just like, <laughs> you know, Michael is so willing to be the sacred masculine in support of his mm -hmm. divine feminine beloved and vice versa. And there is no... There is no loss for him. There is no diminishment for him. I don't know, Michael, you want to say a word or two? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you pretty much said it all. I mean, certainly I kind of like, I'm her protector as any uh, feminine uh, male should be to their wife, girlfriend, or another uh, woman, uh, doesn't matter and to help them to get where they need to be. But Diana is the one that has helped me to get where I need to be. So, so we've worked together for a good many years. Um, so I'm happy to be um, in this relationship with her. By the way, it's how Mount Shasta brought us together. So it was, yeah. it was pretty incredible. Thank you so much. Well, you can we put in the chat how people can get a hold of you if they yep. feel called to really explore the holy womb wisdom work because I, I was just blown away when I realized there was this connection with really elevating the level of mastery that Mother Mary mm -hmm. has is just like it, I just all of a sudden woke up and like went oh my god <laughs> we got to bring them on we got to talk about this because now um Thank you so much. So I'm going to go back to sharing screen and and uh, talk a little bit about the dance itself. Mm -hmm. um, and then, D Darren, you can begin to figure out how to cue up the dance. The dance is called the Celebration of Love Dance, and it was inspired from an Israeli folk dance. And I'm going to ask Ilona to come on and introduce the dancers that are with us tonight because we have all of the dancers who danced. Alona is in blue in the dance representing Mother Mary. And then we have Karen LaPuma, Celestine Starr and Andreas. So there you are. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, well, just a little bit more on the dance. The, the synchronicity was happening for me too, as soon as Christy said uh, the theme this Easter was e equality or equanimity or equality in love and uh, community, uh, I immediately thought of the form of folk dance because a folk dance represents a group of people coming together as a body, as a unit and dancing in unison together so then that creates another dimension besides individuals. Um, that's what the folk dance is. So I immediately thought of that and this uh, Israeli folk dance came to mind, which we, I then embellished and expanded and Christine and Kem added the music, Christine Tulis and Kem Stralka added their own version of the music so then Christy told me about her discovery about uh, dancing in the early Christian church. And actually dancing has always been associated with, um, in all indigenous peoples with religious ceremony. It's not until the, the institutions um, forbade it, I think believe the 16th century or so. But up until then they were doing dances and they were doing circle dances. 
uh, and that is what folk dances usually are, circle dances. And the circle, of course, represents infinity, uh, unity, uh, oneness. And when we dance folk dances, we repeat a pattern over and over again, and we go around and around. So this imitates life. It's like we have cycles of life and death, but cycles of life and death go on and on. So it's that, it's that ending beginning, but eternal quality of it as well. Wonderful. The so, so the dancers are the uh, um, Elizabeth Kelly, Karen LaPuma, Celestine Starr, and Andrea La Canela, who is actually my flamenco dance teacher, and myself. So with that, I invite you to watch our dance. All right, thank you, Felicity.
Thank you so much. Isn't that wonderful? Oh my God. Thank you guys. <laughs> so precious. And a circle of harmony. Everybody moving together in love. Such a metaphor, such a beautiful expression of who we are. So today we have the wonderful and most delightful and amazing opportunity to be able to have one of my favorite scholars of all time who has rocked this world with her books, The Expected One and a New York bestseller, over a million copies sold, Kathleen McGowan, who happens to be right now in Cairo, Egypt, is staying in the hotel with the backdrop of the Giza pyramids. So Darren is going to plug us in so that we can hear her sermon on the Magdalene. She is probably the most formidable uh, scholar, not only as a, as a scholar of research, but also because her work that she has done has been tied to the Magdalene through her own mystical experiences that she has had where the apparition of Mary Magdalene appeared to her and um, helped her with the birth of her son and saved his life. So, you know, she, she has a very deep, loving, abiding connection to the Magdalene. So take it away, <laughs> Darren. Lug us into Cairo, Egypt. Happy Easter, everybody. Um, I'm coming to you today from the Giza Plateau uh, in Egypt, obviously, which is why I couldn't be with you live at the Moonrise service. Um, but I, I think that there's a, a lot of reasons to be here on Easter, on this day of resurrection, when we celebrate the magical, um, the mystical, the hyper-spiritual, the incredible, because a lot of people would say that the structures behind me are actually a, a type of resurrection machine and perhaps they were. But that's another discussion for another day. Today we're going to talk about the meaning of Easter and the resurrection. For he is risen, he is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Let's think about that for a second. These are the things that we say just so freely and so fluently on Easter, but I think it's really important that we start taking apart some of the Easter scripture and some of the Easter traditions today to really look at where they might have come from. So he is risen indeed, which means he is risen in actuality. He is actually risen. This is a fact. This is something that has happened. But how do we know? How do we know that Jesus is risen? We know because there is a witness. There is a very important witness to the resurrection, and that witness is, of course, Mary Magdalene. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene to announce this miracle, this miracle that reminds all of us, that informs all of us, that demonstrates for all of us that we are eternal beings. This extraordinary basis of not just Christianity, but many, many other spiritual teachings. This comes from resurrection. And who is the common denominator in the resurrection stories beside Jesus? Magdalene. Magdalene's importance in the resurrection of Jesus is critical for a number of reasons that we're gonna talk about, but also Magdalene's presence with the resurrection of Lazarus. So we see that she is a really critical factor in these stories and yet she comes across according to the way the traditional gospels are told as almost incidental her importance in the story is there certainly but she is never really acknowledged as integral to what's happening in the drama but integral she is now let's look first at why Magdalene. Why did Jesus appear to Magdalene to announce the resurrection? Well, first of all, because she was there. 
because she was there. And that's no small thing, because this is one of the elements that makes Mary Magdalene so important in this story. This is where the idea of equality and balance comes in. She is the divine feminine throughout this entire extraordinary drama. And she is always there. And he knows that. Nobody knows that she is the most dependable person in his world more than Jesus. He knows that Magdalene is the one that he can depend upon. Because here's the thing. If she is not there to announce the resurrection, we don't know about it. The res does a resurrection exist? This is like the proverbial question, right? If a tree falls in the forest with no one to hear it, does it make a sound? If Jesus is resurrected and Magdalene is not there to witness it and to tell us about it, does it become the foundation of Christianity? Does it become the event that changes the world without Magdalene's courage to tell the story? Because I don't think it does. I don't think it does. And here's why. You could make an argument, potentially, that one of the male disciples would have gone on to eventually tell this story, but they weren't there. They weren't there, so how could they tell the story? And I wanna, I'm gonna read something, so give me, uh, just uh, indulge me while I go off to grab this segment of the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. But in the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, chapter five, which was found here in Egypt. And that's another reason why Egypt is so important to the story, because the Coptic people carried on these traditions and wrote about them. And a lot of the manuscripts that we have from the quote Gnostic material comes from this land here and from the descendants of the Coptic people and the original first century apostles and then desert fathers and mothers who came here and preserved all of those traditions. So it seems very appropriate to be reading from this gospel of Mary Magdalene, which is a translation from the Egyptian Coptic. So Magdalene is speaking to the male apostles in this passage. But they were grieved. They wept greatly saying, how shall we go and preach the gospel of the kingdom of the son of man? If they did not spare him, how will they spare us? Then Mary stood up, greeted them all and said to her brethren, do not weep and do not grieve nor be irresolute for his grace will be entirely with you and will protect you. But rather let us praise his greatness for he has prepared us. And when Mary said this, she turned their hearts to the good and they began to discuss the words of the Savior. And Peter said to Mary, Sister, we know that the Savior loved you more than the rest. Tell us the words of the Savior which you remember, which you know, but we do not, nor have we heard them. And Mary answered and said, what is hidden from you, I will proclaim to you. Wow, that passage changes the world, doesn't it? It certainly does for me. That passage shows you so many important instructive things about what was happening immediately following the crucifixion. The male apostles were scared. And we know that because they don't appear anywhere in those critical last three days of Jesus's life. Once Jesus is taken into, into Pilate's custody, with the exception of Simon the Cyrene and the, during the Via Dolorosa, during the, the Stations of the Cross, we do not have a male apostle anywhere in the picture to support him. Who is there to support him? The women the Marys, led by Mary Magdalene. So what we know from these passages is that if Magdalene had not been there to relate this story, there would be no Easter. And what if we take that even further? How would we know the story of what happened during the crucifixion? How would we know the story of Good Friday? 
How do we know what happened at the foot of the cross? How do we know what happened when Jesus was taken from the cross, the deposition? How do we know what happened when they brought him to the tomb? How do we know any of those things? Well, we know because they were written about in the Gospels, right? The earliest Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. How did they know? They weren't there. The male apostles were not present during most of the events that are written about in the synoptic gospels we could make a case maybe that in the gospel of john that john is the beloved the beloved disciple and that john was there i actually don't believe that to be true but some people do so okay for a minute that's fine but that gospel comes later that gospel is later than the original three so how do matthew mark and luke come to understand this extraordinary story and recount it for us if they weren't there. Because they heard it from somebody who was determined to carry that story. And that somebody could only be Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is the source material for what is happening in the Gospels. And that is something that makes her so much more important than we've ever been led to believe. There is no story without Magdalene to live it, to witness it, to experience it, and then to have the courage to tell it when nobody else did. And it is time to restore her to her rightful place as the queen of Holy Week. She is every bit as important as anyone and more important than most in this story. When I was first asked to speak about Easter today, Christy had asked me how I felt about this theme about the word equality and I jumped on it and I said yes because the spiritual version of equality is balance, right? That's the spiritual synonym. We are looking for balance here. And this story is dreadfully out of balance because we have lost the woman who is the heart of this story. We have lost the storyteller and that is Magdalene and it is time to restore her. It is time to bring in a new living archetype of who Mag Mary Magdalene is and can be for all of us in the 21st century. This old paradigm of Magdalene as the wounded woman, as the, as the penitent woman, these old paradigms are part of the past. They are not part of our future. Our future of Magdalene and a Magdalene paradigm is Magdalene in her strength, in her perseverance, in her fierce devotion. Fierce. She is fiercely compassionate. She is fiercely devotional. But she is brave and she is strong. Going back to some of the extraordinary material that was discovered here in Egypt, we're going to go back to Nag Hammadi in 1945 and the Nag Hammadi Gospels that were discovered here. And I want to talk about the Gospel of Philip for a moment because there is a phrase in the Gospel of Philip that rocks my world every time I read it. And it's, it's probably not a coincidence that my late husband, Philip, actually led me to this particular passage um, in, in a funny way, which I'll relate maybe a little bit later. But um, the passage is this, the truth is our mother. The truth is our mother. Now, there are different translations of what comes next, depending on who, uh, who the translator is. Uh, one of the translations says, the truth is our mother and knowledge is our father. Now, this is a really interesting idea about balance, isn't it? Because knowledge is, is cerebral, it's linear, it's masculine, right? Knowledge is our father, but the truth the truth is something else and the truth is our mother and when we combine these things when we combine the truth that is our mother and the knowledge that is our father we have wisdom we have Sophia 
And this is what Magdalene embodied. Mary Magdalene embodied this balance, this exquisite balance of truth and knowledge. And she became wisdom. And taking that wisdom and applying her devotion, her faith and her fierce perseverance, she becomes not only the apostle of the apostles, but the master apostle. The, the apostle as teacher. She becomes the teacher of the apostles. And that is how she deserves to be remembered. And that is the balance that we need to restore on this beautiful Easter. Let us bring back the queen of Holy Week, who is our queen going forward into the 21st century, our role model for perseverance, for grace, for courage, and for wisdom. God bless all of you on this glorious, glorious Easter, and may the beautiful combination of Jesus and Mary Magdalene bless all of you, and I and continue. <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone! Wow, thank you so much, Kathleen McGowan. Awesome, and she has a new book coming out. The Way of the Magdalene, which you're going to want to find out about. But now I'm going to have beautiful Nina Gray, Grace of Swift, her beautiful song. Thank you. Thank you. Receiving that transmission fully, fully. That was powerful. Knowledge is our father, truth is our mother, and together they are wisdom. <sighs> I really loved that. Um, I'll be sharing a song called May I See Love, written in the spirit of Christ consciousness of this second coming of this resurrection. This is a prayer and a mantra that I hope you take in as we are emissaries and walking embodiments of this consciousness day by day, moment by moment. May we see love, may we speak love. May I see love, may I see love, may I see love, 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 love. May I speak love, may I speak love, may I speak love, 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 love. May I stay open, may I stay humble, may I stay true to what's so much bigger than me. May I show mercy, may I practice forgiveness for all of my friends, for all I could and could not be. May I see love, may I see love, may I see love, 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 love. May I speak love, may I speak love, may I speak love, 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 love. May my kindness not be taken for weakness. May my strength always be rooted in grace. May I see through all these masks that were faking. May I see innocence when I see your face. May I see love. May I see love, may I see love, 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 love. May I speak love, may I speak love, may I speak love, 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 love. Well, I know I may not always get it right. 
And I know I may not always see the light, but I know, I know I'll always try every day this one and precious life. May I see love. May I see love, may I see love, 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 love. May I speak love, may I speak love, may I speak love, 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 love. and may I serve love. May I serve love, may I serve love, 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 and may I sing love, may I sing love, and may I sing love, 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 love. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Nina. Blessed be. You're so fortunate to have such an exquisite singer. And I want to now invite my dear friend, Dan Craig Morris, for we need to hear from the masculine. And Dan's going to offer his reflections as a sacred masculine man who is deeply devoted to this wisdom of God, to the Sophia. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Christy. And thank you, everyone. Wow, this is so beautiful. Uh, and it's really a pleasure and an honor to be here to give an offering on this special day of becoming the great self. So where does a man, where do we men step into this circle of priestesses, into this mystery of the divine feminine? As I take in all that is being shared here, I feel moved to respond from the standpoint of a man with an awareness of the long trajectory of the patriarchy, which has marginalized women and silenced their voices in the spirit of pushing the balance towards more equality. I was inspired to hear Kathleen McGowan's witness to Mary Magdalene as being a key witness to the resurrection. Ironically, it feels like this is what we men can do to support you women and this return of the sacred feminine. How do we men be in relationship to the theme of Queen Mary Magdalene? instead of analysis, instead of trying to figure it out and try to, instead of trying to fix it, like we always try to do, I thought maybe it's best to just simply offer my witness. I see you, Kathleen, halfway around the world, standing before the great pyramids, stating a clear message of how vital the role of Mary Magdalene has played in this whole 2000 year honoring of the resurrection, of the symbol of the great human potential, the Christ. I see you, women of grace, Christy, Nina, Diana, Oshala, Luminessa, Elizabeth, all of you and all of the women who are joining us here tonight. In the beauty that flows through your words, <clears throat> through your movements, your inspiration, how this has been overlooked for so long. Why have men in a man's world just seen you as weak, as secondary, as footnotes to the religious stories authored mostly by men? How can I, we men, see you more clearly for who, for what you really are? I want to see you in a way that is not clouded by my own ego by my own triggers or my insecurities. I want to be a pristine mirror 
that reflects back to you just how valuable you are. I got to see Kathleen's video before this, and there's a magical moment in Kathleen's video. And she's reading the Gospel of Mary, and she's talking about the apostles, they're grieving, and they're scared about what might become of them. And Kathleen reads, then Mary stood up. And there is a fleeting moment in the video when a bird, I don't know if anybody caught it, it's probably a seagull. It flies across the screen and Kathleen's head is on the side and it flies basically right into her eye and disappears behind her. And the Great Pyramid directly behind Kathleen. Then Mary stood up. I mean, it's the synchronicity of underlining those words. The dove of the Holy Feminine. Beauty is before us. Magic is afoot. I am humbled by the movement of the Divine Feminine, of Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, Holy Sophia. How can we be men be more attuned to your message, to your frequency, such that we are no longer locked in lower vibrational, ego-protected, fear-based being? How can we be more present to you with openness, soft but fierce and compassionate in the strength of our masculinity? Indeed, we men invoke the sacred masculine archetype of helping to hold space, like Michael said, of being protectors and champions of heart wisdom, to be Christed beings in a world that is overwhelmed with trauma, that longs to be met with this fierce love and the warmth of this divine spark. O oh, Holy Mother Priestess, ah, Mother of Divine Light, thank you, thank you. Thank you, women, for standing up. Many blessings. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you. <clears throat> Blessed be. Blessed be. Oh, my God. I, I love it when the sacred masculine, unthreatened, full of joy, willing to stand as equal representative of the one life that we all are part of. No difference, no separation. We are one. And Dan, you are such an emanation. How about every, all the women, raise your hands and just bless Dan for his beauty and his willingness to represent the beautiful emergence of the sacred masculine who honors the Sophia, the Christ, the Christo Sophia. Thank you, Dan. We really honor you. So normally we would have ended the service by now, but unfortunately, not unfortunately, or fortunately, a mystical experience happened to me as I was putting this together, which was I was told to impart the wisdom of the holy wisdom chakra, which Diana Melchizedek and, and Michael were so kind and willing to jump on. And, and, and give some knowledge to it. Because sometimes when these downloads come and visions come and I'm putting pieces together, I have no idea that, wow, this is really about empowering the feminine and helping us all to understand what mastery these women, these sacred holy women, and we live in a culture and a world that is strikingly devoid of sacred holy women, although you see many before you right now. But we invite you all, each one of us on this platform, Elizabeth Kelly, who's with the Holy Order of Mary Magdalene, she is going to be teaching on the Egyptian series. Well, we have just a few more things that we're going to do, which is probably restoring the most wonderful and sacred lost art of anointing. And I have asked the pinnacle of anointing priestess. Christine is such an embodiment of the sacred feminine. I just wanted to really thank you and acknowledge you, Christine, for all that you bring with your beautiful harp and your beautiful soul. And um, 
as she's going to take us in. So those of you who have your anointing oils, please get them ready. Because Christine is going to explain about the sacred art of anointing, and then she's going to lead us through it. And she's going to be joined by Michelle and Eliyahu. And these two beautiful souls, um, Michelle is the woman who did the reading on the Black Madonna. So Michelle, you'll have to type into the chat room how people, because many people will probably want a reading from you. <laughs> but, you know, it, they're going to lead us in a ceremony that everybody gets to partake in. So you just need to get your sacred oils ready and listen along as Christine will guide you in this next phase of, of what is this lost art of the sacred anointing. Christy, beloved friends, the ancient art of anointing has been practiced for thousands of years all over our beautiful planet. And it really comes from the innate desire to bless each other and to acknowledge each other's holiness and divine origins and our sacred nature. I have been trained in this ancient healing art by Diana Dubrow of the Emerald Temple. And I am very pleased that I have found this work so that I can be one of the people who share it with you. And so before we go into our experience, our beloved priestess Michelle is going to do a blessing of the oils. In ancient Hebrew times, the women carried the blessing of the anointing oil. They made the sacred oils from plants and infused holy blessings to create a resonance within the oil that help us emanate divine light. We continue that tradition today as we chant sacred Hebrew from the Song of Songs, which is always offered at Passover. Today is the eighth and last day of Passover. And so we have Hebrew from the Song of Songs, which says, Praise Goddess Shekhinah, blessed one of all time and space. Your ointments yield a sweet fragrance. Your name is like the finest oil. Bless the sacred oils with love of all time upon you. Brucha Adia Shehi Na Eloha Tenu Malkata Ola. Lareach Shemanecha Tom Shin Tura Shemecha Al Kain Alamo Aha With this sacred blessing, my dear beloved husband, my love partner, Eliyahu Goodman, and I are honoring the Magdalene we have, the Magdalene nighting, the night of Magdalene, and Eliyahu is a knight of the Magdalene order. And so as we move into our sacred anointing, we will and we are honoring the beautiful blessing of Magdalene knighting the knight of Magdalene <laughs> on this holy night. <laughs> and so it is. So it, so is. it shall always be. 
I love you ever so much. I cherish you. You are the heart of my heart. I feel so blessed to be your husband, your partner in life, writing to live our life with you. It is such a blessing. My soul sings and my heart dances. I love you ever so much. So, beloved friends, now I will lead us in a self-anointing experience, and then our beloveds, Michelle and Eliyahu, will be demonstrating on each other. If you have a friend with you, if you are watching us with a friend tonight, you may anoint each other. And if you are by yourself, you will anoint yourself as I lead us through this experience. So if you have an oil with you, you may get it now. And if you don't have an oil, that's absolutely fine because you can just project the love from your heart right into your hands. For that is truly where the sacred love comes from, from our heart to our hands. But if you have an oil, then you can take it and just hold it in your hands for a moment and send your love into the oil. The beautiful plant essences that are our co-creators. And take some of your oil and put some into your hand. And just inhale the scent. And let yourself just drink in the blessings of the scent of the oil. And as you inhale, ground yourself. So feel yourself grounded onto beautiful Mother Earth as we prepare for our anointing. And just circle your hand into the oil. The first place we're going to anoint is the top of our heads, our crown chakra. So just place your hand lightly at the very center of the top of your head, where that soft spot is on a baby. This is where we hear and receive the divine messages of the creator, of inspiration. So we are blessing and acknowledging this energy center in our body, opening it to receive even more insight, wisdom, and knowledge from the higher realms. And now take a little more of your oil and you can bless the middle of your forehead, which is known as your third eye chakra or your spiritual eye just acknowledging your essence, your spirit self, and invoking clear vision, clear seeing. And now taking a little more of your oil on your hand and anoint your throat, that you may have the strength to speak the truth and to speak the truth with love and clarity. And to sing and to create beauty. And now take a little more of the oil and anoint your heart. Just send your heart so much love and blessings. And allow this center to open and perceive the love that you are surrounded by right now. The love that is the source of your being, 
that is the source of who you are. And now I will play as beloved Eliyahu anoints Michelle. And you may follow along with them if you are with a friend this evening sharing anointing. should be thank you thank you so much my dear beloved ones thank you you are such an embodiment of the truth that we are divine and i am so grateful for your heartfelt desire like kathleen mcgallan said magdalene was devoted fiercely devoted. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So we are I'm now, we are now, me. yes, we are now coming to the end of our thing. We should go to gallery view. <laughs> we could, Darren, because we have so many wonderful people that have shared their hearts and their, their wisdom and, um, participating. Thank you all for joining us. And Darren, if you could spotlight yourself, I would really like to acknowledge you, Darren, because Darren jumped in at the last minute to help not only run the tech, 
but to cover for one of our musicians who couldn't couldn't attend. So he has a song for us to sing. But Darren, first, I want everyone to twinkle you and send you and beam you so much love. Because really, you are truly the emanation of the sacred man in witness to the divine revealing herself as you. We are very grateful to you, Darren. Yeah, I'm very humbled by hearing all these amazing presentations and oh. the majesty of the divine mother. I asked Darren also to come and be a part of this at the end because this is the last day of Passover and Darren grew up in the Jewish tradition. So it is fitting that he take us out in a song honoring and celebrating the merging of all cultures in all ways. Uh, What I'm now going to do to close this event is a British Bajan that connects all cultures, Passover, Easter, and it has the greatest truth in it. Love, 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 love. Nothing you can do that can't be done Nothing you can sing that can't be sung Nothing you can say but you ain't meant to learn the game It's easy Nothing you can make that can't be made No one you can save that can't be saved Know where you can be, but you ain't meant to be you in time. It's easy. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love. Need is love. Love. love is all you need. with me. All, All you need is love. All you need is love. Love is all you need. Love is all you need. Nothing you can know that can't be known. Know where you can see that can't be shown. <laughs> know where you can be, but you aren't where you're meant to be. It's easy. All you need is love. 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 Love is all you need. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love is all you need. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for all you, the participants. Thank you, Kathleen McGowan, for gracing us with the sermon and the beautiful words of restoring the Magdalene and um, all the dancers for dancing. That Wasn't that dance awesome? Yeah. <laughs>
That was so fabulous. Amazing. And Luminessa and Connie and Nina Gray, thank you for joining us too. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate your coming on board and bringing your gifts and talents. So everybody, happy Easter. Everybody say happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy, happy, Easter. Easter. Yeah. happy Pesach. <laughs> thank you, Celestine, our tech <laughs> goddess. Thanks, Kim, the man behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> and Christine Tulis, thank you, dear. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth Kelly. And Diana and Michael Melchizedek, thank you for coming on. Thank and you. When, thank you. when she and walked you. in and said, you got to talk about this, I went, okay, I'll get Diana and Michael come. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Christy. Thank you, Christy. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Christy. Christy. Yes, thank you. Thank you, and Christy. Christy. Had my back too. They've been helping. Me. Number eleven. Number eleven. <laughs> no, very Number eleven. Thank you, Christine. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Christine. Christine. One one equal. One one. Right. Number eleven. She did mastery. It. Mastery. Woo! 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 The gateways of the divine Thank feminine. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Hasta luego. Let the moon rise begin. Everybody what an amazing group of beings. How to get people to get a hold of you, and we'll share. This will be recorded, and recording will be sent out to everybody. So I'm sorry we went over, but you know, that's the goddess way. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> that's what happens when you let the goddess have her way. Mm -hmm. She wants to talk and she hasn't been allowed to talk for much. Yeah. <laughs> May all beings and all worlds be happy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. Beautiful. We love you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Lots of love, Lots of love everybody. Of love. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you, you all. It's been Thank so everyone. very special. Yeah, it was really great. Thank you, guys. I'm just so, so touched. And Diane and Michael, thank you for jumping on. That was really awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. It was all, it was all divinely fine. <laughs>
Bye.